Hello everyone, my name is Hannah. I am one of the youth leaders at Cornerstone Church in Nottingham. It's great to have you with us this evening. Um, Rue and I, who has joined me, um, we're going to be talking about um, a topic which is part of our Life in Lockdown series, where we have been thinking through some of the aspects of what it looks like to be a Christian in the season of coronavirus lockdown and indeed in wider life. So this evening, we are going to be talking about why we should be listening to sermons or talks. What's the point? Why bother? How can we engage with that better as Christians? So, Rue, would you like to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Uh, hello. Thank you for having me. Um, I happened to see one of these uh, videos the other week uh, when you were interviewing someone else, and I thought, oh, that, that looks like something fun to do. So I was very oh, pleased uh, to be asked uh, on this evening. Uh, yeah, my name's Rue. Uh, I am a minister at Cornerstone. Uh, I'm married to Esther uh, and we've got three children uh, who are uh, six, well six and a half actually, it was my daughter's six and a half birthday mm -hmm. uh, today. Yeah, very month. important, six and a half mm -hmm. birthday. Uh, and then uh, a son who's four and a little girl who's one. Lovely. Great. So um, tell us what, what do you get up to as part of your day job then? Yep, um, I mean it's all changed a little bit uh, during lockdown, um, mm. but uh, I think my main job really is uh, teaching and then I guess what we call pastoring uh, people in the church. Um, so that means uh, teaching them uh, about what the Bible says and about how they can uh, apply that to their lives and then pastoring is more just kind of uh, caring for them and helping them uh, to uh, I guess to, to navigate all the ups and downs of life and to do that uh, as Christians and as people who, who follow Jesus Christ. Um, one of the big ways that I do uh, all of that uh, is through preaching, uh, which is one of the parts of my job that hasn't really changed too much during lockdown. Uh, so I was preaching quite a bit before uh, and I'm still doing that now. Great. OK. Um, so, yeah, I've heard you preach many times from the front of Cornerstone and now via YouTube as well. So what is it about preaching that you enjoy? Yeah, thanks. I think uh, probably when I first started preaching, I didn't really enjoy it, uh, but I think, <laughs> I've, uh, I think I've grown to enjoy it. There's a couple of things I enjoy, um, and they're probably bits that are uh, also kind of the stressful bits of preaching as well. So I, I do enjoy preparing uh, sermons. Um, so I get to spend uh, hours of my week uh, digging into a Bible passage, uh, reading books about that Bible passage, trying to think through how does this bit of God's word um, apply to the people that I'm going to be speaking to this week? Um, so how is it relevant to them? Um, what has it got to say to their lives? How is it going to change the way that they live? Um, sometimes that's really hard work. Sometimes I spend hours just sort of pacing up and down and not really getting anywhere, just thinking. Um, but when I, when I, uh, when I get it, uh, when God is good and reveals uh, what what he wants me to say, uh, then that's really exciting. Um, so I love that. I love that process uh, of writing and thinking through what, you know, what's God trying to say to his people through this bit of the Bible. Mm. Um, and then I also, I have now grown to really enjoy uh, delivering sermons as well. So, so preaching, giving the sermon. Um, uh, and again, that's, you know, can be a bit nerve wracking, um, mm. although slightly less nerve wracking at the moment because I'm not standing up in front of hundreds of people. I'm just sitting in front of a camera. Um, so it's slightly, uh, slightly different in lockdown. Um, but again, preaching as, as I deliver the sermon, actually, that's really exciting to think this is God's word going out uh, and doing its work uh, in his people and um, changing people's lives, uh, drawing people into to relationship with Jesus uh, and helping them then to live out that relationship through the rest of their lives. Um, mm. So when I think about it like that, um, it's actually really exciting and it's, uh, yeah. it's a privilege to be involved in it. Yeah, that's great. I don't know about you, but I I haven't had to deliver whole sermons, but when I've done a talk or something for youth or wherever it might be, um, I also find that I really learn a lot myself from yeah. doing it and I get to know whatever passage of the Bible I'm speaking on way better through doing that as well. So that's, I think, a real blessing. Yeah, well. definitely. Cool. Okay. So, yeah, there's the benefit of for the person who's delivering that talk, you're going to learn quite a bit in that process but why do you think it's important that we hear sermons and talks um, and that we dedicate time to doing that particularly I guess in lockdown when it's 
you know, there's so much else around us that we could be doing. We're not physically going to church. So yeah. watching church on a laptop and that laptop it has plenty of other possibilities of things that we could be doing with our time. Yeah, sure. So why bother listening to talks and sermons? Yeah, good question. Um, I think uh, fundamentally the, the main reason is because uh, the God of the Bible, the God we, we worship and, and serve, is a God who speaks. Mm. Um, and he speaks to us in, in a number of different ways. He speaks to us through uh, the, the world that he's made. So as we look at creation around us, we see something of what God is like. He's spoken to us, uh, most importantly, in his son, Jesus. And so when we look at Jesus and, and see uh, what he is like, then that shows us what God is like. Um, but for, for Christians today, the main way that God speaks to us is through his word, so through the Bible. Now, when I say to you, God speaks to us through his word, you probably think that looks like me sitting down and reading my Bible. Um, and that certainly is one of the ways that God speaks to us. But if you think about it over the course of the history of, uh, of the church, of, the, of people following Jesus, um, most Christians have either not been able to read um, or if they have been able to read, they've not had access to a Bible in their mm. language. And so for most Christians, what's it, what it's looked like for God to speak to them by his word is for somebody to speak those words to them. Um, and so for centuries, Christians have listened to, to preachers speaking God's words, helping them to understand and to apply God's word to their lives. And so mm. actually, that's a, that's a pattern all the way through the Bible. We see God. Um, sending people to speak to other people on his behalf so we see it with the prophets in the old testament we see it with the apostles in the new testament and i think there is a line that you can draw to preachers now but the important thing to say in that though is that preachers now are not the same as prophets and apostles in that when i preach it's not my words that are god's words OK, mm -hmm. so there'll be things that I say every time I preach that that are rubbish, that are not true mm -hmm. and that are not helpful. Um, but my prayer is that every time I preach as well, there are things that are helpful and that are from God. Mm -hmm. So I just want to read a, a couple of verses from mm -hmm. um, Acts chapter 17. Um, and um, it's a bit of Acts where Paul's traveling around different churches and meeting different groups of believers. And he goes to a place called Berea. Um, and there's a really interesting description of how the Jewish people in Berea uh, received Paul. Let me just read it to you. This is Acts 17, uh, beginning at verse 11. It says, Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. And so I'd really want to encourage anyone who's listening to one of my sermons, who's listening to any sermon, to have that kind of attitude, be eager to hear what's said, but then make sure you go back to the Bible to see if what the preacher has said is true. And in, in God's grace, very often, the good, good preachers will be speaking God's words. Um, and so as you listen to a sermon, you should have your Bible open and you should be asking the question, is what this preacher is saying actually what it says here in the Bible? And if they are, then brilliant. Be encouraged by that uh, and enjoy hearing God speak to you that way. Yeah, great. Okay, so, um, yeah, I was just sat there kind of thinking to myself, like, um, for a lot of the young people listening, like, sometimes we do sit in on the sermons um, at church, and particularly at the minute, that's, that is predominantly what we're doing. Um, do you think there's any, any kind of material difference between listening to a sermon and listening to a, a talk at youth group, or... Um, are there kind of added benefits or different dynamics that you would see in that in terms of um, listening to God's word? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't, I don't know that sermons are uh, special in one sense, mm -hmm. um, except that you know if, if someone is preaching a sermon that they are coming to you saying, this is, this is what I, I've spent time looking at this Bible passage and really thinking it through and praying it through and asking God to show me what it is that he wants to say to you from this Bible passage. And obviously that happens with your, with your youth group talks as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that can help is to ex come to, to sermons, come to, to, to Bible talks, expecting more. Um, mm -hmm. So expecting God to speak. Um, as I said right at the beginning, one of the main reasons sermons are, are a good thing 
is because God is a God who speaks. And so I think as we listen to sermons, we should be expecting to hear from God. Um, I might say a bit later about exactly what that looks like. Um, mm. But I think one of the things that's going to help us as we come to listen to sermons is to come in expectation, thinking actually this isn't, this isn't a lecture. Um, mm. This isn't like one of my teachers standing up at school and, and speaking for 20 minutes. Um, because actually what's happening here is God is speaking through the person who's doing the sermon. Mm. Yeah, and I guess um, we, in, in the youth group that we have at Cornerstone, Certainly, well, so I'm, I'm a leader of the 11 to 14 group um, and we would have maybe a 10 minute talk. And so there is going to be some material difference, isn't there, between what can be said in 10 minutes and what can be said in 30, 35 minutes. Um, and you're probably going to cover more biblical ground maybe in a sermon um, and maybe more like topical kind of, yeah, different topics or themes um, in a youth group um, talk. So a combination is probably a good thing. Cool. Okay. So, um, like I just said, sermons can feel, if you're used to a 10 minute talk, quite long. <laughs> yep. um, so, yeah, I think particularly when you're sat at home, I know that some Sundays I'm having to sort of sit forward because I'm sat on a sofa and it's comfortable. That's not the same as being sat in church on a chair that is upright and you're around people and it's more engaging. Um, so what, I guess, what um, tips could you offer us for engaging with what you're hearing and remembering it afterwards. Yeah, sure. I, um, I think two things. So, so the first one is what I've said already is, is come expectantly. So to come into that sermon expecting to hear from God. You know, God promises in his word that, that every time his word goes out from him, uh, it does its work. It doesn't return to him empty. So, mm -hmm. uh, so when God's word is preached, he will be working by his Holy Spirit. So that's exciting. And, and, and that means we should come to sermons uh you know wanting to hear them so i guess you know I was, I was trying to think about how think about how you might approach listening to a, a ted talk that you found online or maybe listening to a podcast you listen to those things because you want to listen to them and because you think what the person's got to say is going to be going to be interesting and it's going to uh i guess affect your life in some way it's going to make you think or it's going to change the way you do something and so i'd encourage you to come to a sermon uh, in the same way expect more um, because actually it's god speaking uh, through his word but the second thing i think this is really important is uh be cert be sure about what it is you're expecting because i guess if i say to you, you expect god to speak um, you might be expecting something quite dramatic um you know you mm -hmm. might think there's going to be a big booming voice from heaven there might be some lightning um or at least there's going to be this kind of real burning sensation in your heart as you feel like yeah god's really speaking to me now those things can sometimes happen but I think it's important as we come to sermons to to know what it looks like day by day for God to speak to us through his word. Mm. And as he does that day by day, it's often way more ordinary um, than we might be expecting. And something that I think is really helpful to think about, help us think about this, is uh, a picture that the Bible uses actually for uh, for God's word, which is God's word as food. And as soon as you start thinking about God's word as food, I think it changes our approach to sermons entirely. Mm. So I want you to try and think, even just back over, think back over the last month, maybe two months, um, try and remember a meal that you've had. Now the chances are you might be able to remember one, possibly two, um, but you're not going to remember all of them. In fact, mm. I, you know, in my life, I will have had thousands of meals and I can remember a handful of them. But the reality is that every single one of those meals was helpful for me. It sustained me and it kept me going and it nourished me. Even though I now can't remember what I ate, mm -hmm. it was still good for me at the time. And I think there's something really helpful in that picture when we come to sermons as well. I've also, as well as eating thousands of meals, I've probably heard thousands of sermons, certainly hundreds, probably thousands. And if I'm totally honest, I was trying to think about this afternoon, I'm not sure I can remember a single one of those sermons now. Um, yeah. I can remember the one I preached on Sunday. So that was what, two days ago. Um, <laughs> but that was a sermon that I wrote and preached. So that's, you know, it's probably fair enough. But I can't remember any others. And I think sometimes we feel bad about that. We think, uh, oh, I'm being visited. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Eva. Are going to wave hello to everyone at Cornerstone? This is yeah. Rue's little girl who's just come in to say hello. Oh, wow. 
Right, everyone out. Go on, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> the whole crew has joined us. Everyone's coming in. <laughs> Amazing. That's lockdown life. <laughs> there you go. That's the joy of recording these things in lockdown. Um, where was I? Yeah. So sermons, um, they're a bit like meals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a few of them in your life that are fantastic. Um, it's like going to a, a Michelin starred restaurant and having the best steak that you could have. Sorry if you're vegetarian, I don't know, the best cauliflower that you could have. Um, and it, it's beautiful. It's fabulously cooked. And you talk about it for weeks. You tell all your friends about it, tell all your family about it. And it's a you're just buzzing about that meal. But most sermons that you hear will be satisfying. They will keep you going until the next time you hear something from God's word. Uh, they will fill you up for a time, but then you'll need to come back again. Um, and it's interesting, isn't it? Even those really good meals that we have, the best meal you can possibly, you know, your, your favorite birthday meal that you have every year or whatever. The very next day, you'll sit down for breakfast again and for lunch. And for, so it doesn't keep you going, even though it was brilliant at the time. The thing that keeps you going is regularly eating. And it's just the same with God's word. You know, he hasn't set it up that we can hear one amazing sermon at the point where we become, maybe the, maybe the day we became a Christian, we heard a brilliant sermon and that keeps us going for the rest of our life. That's not how God set it up. He has set it up so that we need to keep coming back day by day, week by week um, to his word and, and feeding on it just like we do when we eat. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you want me to get, there's two bits from the Bible that I think help us think about that. First of all, in Exodus, we see God providing manna for, for uh, his people in the desert. And there's a brilliant bit, you can read about it later, where uh, they try and save some of the manna for the next day. They gather it up in the morning and they try and save it for the next day. And they come to it in the morning and it's gone off and it's full of maggots. It's horrible. And God says to them, look, I want you to depend on me day by day for this manna. So just take what you need for today and then come back again tomorrow and get some more. Mm -hmm. And it's that picture then that Jesus picks up when he's teaching us the Lord's Prayer and he teaches us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. And it's actually built into to how God's made us with food is this idea that he gives us enough for today and we need to come back again tomorrow. And I think it's just the same with the with the Bible, with the word of God. Um, when we come to the Bible, um, God will feed us and it'll be satisfying. Um, but it won't necessarily be, be that sort of dramatic experience. Um, it will be enough to get us through until the next time that we hear from him. So I think as you listen to sermons, expect more because God's going to come and, and speak. Um, but also be sure of what you're expecting. Actually, what you're expecting is for him to nourish you and sustain you um, mm -hmm. until the next time you get into his word. Um, mm -hmm. And so it doesn't need to be a dramatic and, and uh, exciting experience. It just needs to be one that is nourishing uh, and keeps you well fed yeah yeah that's really helpful i think especially if you're used to going to a summer camp or a big christian festival and you know, the atmosphere is buzzing and you hear a really inspiring talk that um yeah it's pitched at, at kind of proclaiming the gospel and and um helping people believe for the first time and it's really exciting yeah come back to church and it's just normal it's just normal life and and sermons are just a bit more normal and um it's like real yeah there's real power in that normality i guess that as you were yeah. saying it's just yeah i think so i think that's a really good example you know i think i think summer camps and and that kind of massive worship experience is absolutely brilliant um mm -hmm. and i i loved that when i was as growing up as a, as a teenager and going to those things was so important to my christian faith um mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that the week by week preaching um, or teaching that you get in your youth groups or, you know, the stuff that you get week by week in your church doesn't mean that that's not keeping you going. So by all means, enjoy the enjoy the feast and the, uh, you know, the Michelin starred restaurant when it comes around. Yeah. Um, but recognize that actually there's some regular day by day uh, teaching that's going to keep you going. Yeah, uh, that's really helpful. I hope that um, that is helpful to you guys listening. Um, particularly during lockdown when things are just a bit different than how they would be normally and we are having to kind of be quite disciplined in in doing things like um listening to sermons and listening to talks um thank you so much Rue, for joining me it's been a real pleasure to talk to you i'm actually off to prepare a gap talk now oh amazing well enjoy doing that and i hope i hope god speaks to you as you're preparing to tell others what thank he says you. to them cheers Rue. take care thank you